We begin now with breaking developments in a cold case that has haunted Southeast Texas for more than 25 years. Mary Catherine Edwards, a beloved daughter, sister and teacher, was found murdered in her bathtub in her townhouse on Park Meadows Drive on the West End in 1995. She'd been sexually assaulted and then killed. For years, investigators, including the Texas Rangers, had very little to go on. But tonight, her family may finally have a chance at some closure. A source tells 12 News police in Ohio have made an arrest. 12 News reporter Jordan James spent the evening piecing together what we know and talking with some of Miss Edwards' former students from Price Elementary. He joins us live. Yeah, Jordan, Miss Edwards touched a number of lives across Southeast Texas, and news about an arrest in connection to her death has brought former students a sense of peace that hasn't been felt in a while. That's Miss Edwards right there, and I am on the top right there. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but for Demetra Green, this image of her fifth grade teacher is everything. Her allowing me to be who I was, which was kind of shy and withdrawn, it helped me to come out of that shell at that time. Mary Catherine Edwards was Green's teacher at Price Elementary in 1992. Edwards was reported missing in 95 and later discovered murdered in her house. It's a tragedy that has haunted her former students. It, it was sad hearing that, man, because like I say, man, she was a real nice lady. And, you know, we when I did hear it on the news, how, I mean, the state that they, they found her in, man, that was, that was just like, that was that was that was that was horrible. 26 years after Edwards' death, a source tells 12 News that a person has been arrested in connection to her death. The news brought Green to tears after finding out. It doesn't bring her back, but it can bring a sense of relief to know that the person has been caught and will um, will be punished for what they did to her because she definitely didn't deserve it. Mary Catherine Edwards, a beloved teacher still impacting the lives of students decades after her death. Like legacy wise, yeah, she was just a caring, she, a, 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 a genuine spirit, you know, a, a caring legacy, man. She, she cared about our students very, very much. At this time, we're still working to learn more about this arrest. In the coming days, officials are expected to release some more information. Once they do, we will pass that information along to you. Reporting here live in Beaumont, Jordan James, 12 News. Jordan, live for us at police headquarters tonight. And Jordan, before we move on, I have to say, I was struck by what one person wrote to me on Facebook saying, news of an arrest may bring relief but it's difficult to ever find closure. We thank you for the perspective tonight. Uh, so many different law enforcement agencies have worked this cold case for decades. Beaumont PD, the Texas Rangers, last year DPS got involved, increasing the reward to $6,000, looking for clues in Mary Catherine Edwards' murder. She was only 31 when she was killed. Again, a suspect in custody in Ohio, according to our 12 news sources. Stay with us on air and online as we follow all the new developments. Right now, there's new info on a murder that happened just yesterday in Old Town. Beaumont police say the accused gunman killed his former girlfriend, and they had a one-year-old child together. CPS telling us tonight that child is with relatives. Now, Bradley Williams is in jail, held on a $1 million bond, charged with the murder of the baby's mother, Liz Carpio. Beaumont police say they caught him around 11.30 last night, about 12 hours after the murder at a duplex on McFadden. They also tell 12 News that Carpio was in the process of getting a protective order against Williams. Her death is one of many domestic violence cases in the city just this year. Most recent homicides, our last six that have occurred in the year of 2021, have had some sort of domestic violence component. So police have not released a motive, but the BPD Family Violence Detectives Unit, they're the ones handling the investigation. Liz Garpio was a member of a car audio team, a group known as the Base Outlaws. That group will be holding a memorial and fundraiser for her next Saturday, May the 8th at 6 p.m. Well, tonight we're getting a little bit of a chance to dry out after some soaking rains today. Look how much fell in places north of the Triangle. This map that Patrick put together tracking all of those big rainfall totals across the lakes and certainly areas north of Houston. Unfortunately, more rain is on the way this weekend. Patrick, what are you thinking? How much more? Well, uh, another one to two inches possible right on through Sunday. Uh, the bulk of that coming in on Sunday, taking a look at our forecast. More rain. We've increased our rain chances to a 70% coverage of showers, some storms, and it looks like uh, after daybreak tomorrow morning, the first half of the day, 
uh, seeing that rain and a few storms, but uh, going to have to watch uh, late Saturday night into the wee hours Sunday morning. Could see a round of severe weather, a slight risk with one to two inches. Again, I think that uh, Saturday morning is going to be soggy after daybreak right on through about noontime with improving weather during the mid and late afternoon hours. And then another round of strong to possibly severe thunderstorms coming in uh, late Saturday night into the Sunday morning time frame before things start drying out once again towards uh, Sunday night. Future cast shows we ought to be pretty much dry through about uh, 5 o'clock in the morning. But afterwards, there's that round of rain. As it weakens, there is a very marginal risk of severe weather tomorrow. As you can see, cloudy skies, temperatures upper 60s to near 70. And here's our next round of rain looming into central Texas headed our way. More on your storm tracker forecast coming up on 12 News. Thank you, Patrick. By this time tomorrow night, we'll have a better idea who will be Beaumont's next mayor. A reminder, yes, tomorrow is Election Day. We've got city and school board races on the ballot, along with propositions. If you live in Beaumont, you have 16 propositions on which to vote. To learn more uh, about what's on the ballot in your city, just text VOTE to 409-838-1212, and we'll send you the 12 News Election Guide right on your phone. And 12 News will have Election Day coverage for you all day on air and online. Power City tonight and less than 12 hours to go now until nearly 650 union workers at ExxonMobil may be locked out of the downtown refinery. The energy giant cannot reach a deal with the United Steelworkers. Yesterday, union workers and their supporters held a rally outside the plant. Today on the company's Facebook page, the plant manager shared this message for employees. Our lockout decision is a result of the union not accepting the company contract proposals and the real risk of a strike. It is vital to the safety of our community that we control this timeline to allow our qualified and highly skilled team to assume safe control of our operations. Now, yesterday at that rally, we talked to union employees and asked them, what's the biggest sticking point? Their response, health and safety concerns. One rep telling us a part of the reason why they've not agreed to any proposal is that they're still pushing for what's best for their members. We feel confused about the proposals that the company have on the table today. It just, it, it's very confusing for the membership because they are saying, you know, I give, I give every day, and then now when we want a new agreement, this is where we are. Well, the union and the company have been trying to agree on a contract since January. That lockout could take effect at 10 tomorrow morning. 12 News will keep you updated on this story. A lot unfolding. We'll be on top of it for you on air and online this weekend. In case you missed it, the fisherman who died yesterday at a major league fishing tournament on Lake Sam Rayburn, he's been identified as 77-year-old Pete Lamons Jr., the Jacksonville native played football for UT and then later for the New York Jets, where he competed in Super Bowl III in 1969. He fell from a boat while competing as a co-angler. Co-anglers typically help the professional fishermen in tournaments like this one. This happened on Lake Sam Rayburn yesterday. The tournament organizers say the boat was not running when Lamons went into the water. Texas Parks and Wildlife and officials in San Augustine County are both investigating. The discovery of an abandoned vehicle in Bridge City has led to more questions tonight about the whereabouts of a man who's missing. These are photos sent to us by a viewer who discovered an abandoned car near Bailey's Fish Camp two days ago. The Orange County Sheriff's Office says the vehicle belongs to a man named Luis Martinez Gonzalez. He was last seen Wednesday in Lumberton. His family taking to social media, saying that he left his home in Memphis, Tennessee on Monday and he was planning to travel to Mexico. Tonight, they're desperate for answers. If you have any info, please call the Orange County Sheriff's Office. To Groves now, where police have charged this mother with child endangerment after her two-year-old tested positive for meth. A Jefferson County grand jury indicted Krista Sherry this week. Investigators say Sherry admitted that her child was around while she was using meth with the child's father, but the mom was unable to explain why the child tested positive. And Port Arthur police also dealing with a bit of a mystery. They still don't know how two people ended up shot inside a car. Officers found the victims in a vehicle along Memorial Boulevard near Highway 73 very early this morning. We're talking 4.30 a.m. The car was on the side of the road. Still no word on their conditions tonight. It's being called one of the largest human smuggling busts in Texas history. Houston police and Harris County Sheriff's deputies and many more agencies moving in this afternoon and finding 
91 people inside a stash house. Five were women, the rest all men. Thankfully, none were kids. Police say several of them are infected with COVID-19. Some had not had food or water for days.